Hi, everyone. We're on the red carpet and we're meeting one of our honorees tonight. It's Amy Lee from Evanescence. Hi, Amy. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here for this virtual red carpet, uh, you know, in the middle of like doing everything from home. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Congratulations. It's a nice, it's a nice break from that. It's nice to like pretend <laughs> <laughs> that life can move forward. I can't wait until we can do these things in person again. Yes. I would imagine as a musician, touring is probably one of those things that. Number we, one, number yeah. one, besides seeing all my family that I haven't seen, um, being able to play music in the flesh with that crowd. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, we're, we're real close. I know, I think so. Real yeah. close, I think so too. Yeah. So I wanna ask you about what it's like to, I mean, you know, you've you've received Grammys, you've got, I mean, you're, you're roster is impressive of course there are other awards such as like rock goddess and all that i mean you know but <laughs> but what does it mean to you when you receive an award from you know a group that is dedicated to women professionals that's really special i i i can't count on a hand like how many awards i have like that um this is this is kind of standing out um, on its own. I think that's wonderful. What an incredible thing to do. There are so many incredible um, women to honor, but there's so many incredible women musicians to honor. Um, and in our place, this being about rock, I don't think this could come at a better time. Um, this is about uh, using of our voice. I mean, I know I'm not trying to plug my song. It's funny because that's that's been this theme uh in this time for me um and it would have been whether or not it ended up coming out in a lyric but it makes sense that it did um it, it's just become such a time um for people to stand up and and say this is who i am and i'm proud to be who i am and i should be able to be who i am and be proud of that like we all all should um i, I don't know how I, i'm sure i'm not articulating that great but um we are here and we've been here and we're proud to be here. And I am, I'm so proud to be standing beside so many other incredible women who I love. Um, Lizzie Hale, I mean, I know obviously she's hosting tonight is uh, one, of my, one of my best, most favorite women. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm always pr proud to stand beside her. But apart from that, I mean, all the others, Nancy Wilson, um, so many more. Um, it's a, a great honor. And um, it's about time we had like a little moment to celebrate something. We need yes. to. Yes, for sure. It's definitely necessary. And, and you guys have been working on and you've been working on um, a new a new recording that's going to be released. Which is very exciting. Yes, the I know. Bitter truth, right? The bitter yes. truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the um, bitter truth? <laughs> God, every day. It's been a day, bitter year, so tell us the bitter truth. I know. Every day I have a new thing that I'm like, that's the bitter truth. <laughs> um, I, I, right now, um, it, it's it's hard because it's a lot of things that aren't funny or smiley to say. Um, but I think the fact that we're facing a lot of these realities is really healthy, and we have to. Um, there has to be a moment for us to go, okay, we're broken, this is messed up, and it's not gonna change if we just um, keep pretending like it isn't here. So face, facing these um, injustices uh, with uh, sexism and racism and uh, so much more um, that are happening around the world, um, it's time and the bitter truth is that we do have to go through these growing pains and face this um, in order to get to a better place. So um, as hard as it is and as scary as it has been at times, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to a better tomorrow for um, not just myself, but uh, for my son um, and um, for the people coming after us. Yes, wonderfully said. Do you feel that, um, or I don't know, not about feel, was, it's been a decade since we've had an album from you guys. And, you know, I think everyone's looking forward to it. Did this, did the state of the world precipitate this or? Yeah, definitely. It, it was coming anyway. Um, so we were already working on it and we were actually already in the studio, thank God, because we got some great groundwork laid before we had to separate. Um, but there was so much left to do and we didn't have a timeline and we were 
booking tours and thinking about sort of um, playing our concerts and we're gonna write in between. It wasn't this giant priority. Um, and then when the pandemic hit and we had a handful of songs and a great start going, but we knew we, we were halted. Um, it was like, okay, we're not gonna waste this time, but we're gonna yeah. pour this in. And for me, that started out as just using the time and pouring myself into music and making it all about the music. But then um, as time went on, um, the music became really, really important in my life, like as a place, as an, an outlet to talk to myself about uh, how I felt and what was going on and um, what I wanted. Um, so there's so much in life that we can't control and being able to create something, whether it's some big monumental thing that you put a ton of pressure on yourself for, or just, um, I don't know, just building a little something. So many people have gotten creative in this time. And I, I think there's a reason for that. We need to go, who am I? And that comes out in big ways and little ways. And for me, in this time um, that was making our album and it had been a really long time. And I do put a lot of thought um, into those words and this more than ever this time, there were so many words in real time, so many things happening that I needed to get off my chest. So um, music has been the thing that has just saved me in this last year. And I'm so grateful um, to have that thing you know <laughs> the yeah. one little tiny thing that I feel like I can kind of control yeah it's the biggest thing though because music affects all of us that way I think I think it it you know it moves everyone so to say that it it's coming at the right time for your fans I mean what do you think their anticipation is or I, I, do you think it's like they're like yes I need this too you know yeah that's part of it. I love to cook. Um, I was talking about how I made dinner before this interview um, <laughs> for my family. It's like, okay, dinner's early. I'm going out to the back. Um, when you make something, the whole point, I feel like always is like, I got to share this with somebody. Um, that's the real payoff is getting to um, experience that with somebody else. And when it comes to art and food is art too, like the best part is when you're experiencing it together and sharing it with somebody and seeing the look on your face and recognizing the little details about it that you like too and that you see yourself in that's how we come together that's how we see our likenesses um and i don't know music for me is this beautiful place to find unity and common ground um amidst a sea of trouble. I mean, there's so much, so much right now, especially in this country that's dividing us. Um, something that I always feel like can bring us together, if anything can. Um, it's music and art and the things that speak to our soul on a deeper level than all the little superficial things that start to feel so big when maybe they're not so big. Maybe our priorities aren't so right. Um, maybe we need to come together just on a deeper level of being humans in this together. Yeah. With that being said, I don't want to interrupt your family dinner. You should go back in there. And watch them <laughs> well, that they meal. got to eat it. I don't get to eat it. I get to go eat it after I'm done working. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the true sacrifice of the person in charge. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it more, though, because I'm going to take my time. Leave me alone, right? <laughs> <laughs> so and also, I mean, like during all this, you know, you have a young one, like, which is, are you experiencing life in a different way through having a child and being a musician now? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, it's harder, but it's more wonderful. Um, just like, you know, like I was just saying, like getting to share something with somebody is, is the thing. Um, so now I kind of get to time travel because we get to go back and um, I get to share with Jack um, some of my favorite things from when I was a kid. And I'm having memories that I had forgotten uh, that I had with my parents and my siblings um, and remembering a piece of myself that I haven't been as much um, because I haven't been a kid, um, but I really get to be a kid again in a lot of ways with him. And um, the the part about this this last year that has been a blessing uh, is the fact that we've had to spend so much time together, um, and that's a challenge. Um, it truly is, uh, especially when they're six and and active and and need to get out, and it's just it's just the three of us. Um, but 
we got to spend all this time really together, uh, learning together and playing together and just movie binging together, you know, and, and everything else. So uh, yeah, it, it's, it's harder because now I'm looking at the future and thinking about, okay, I'm I remembering the road with me. <laughs> it, exactly. I'm remembering what was the struggle in my head before the pandemic. It was we were just about to go on tour and he's just now entering an age where he really needs to be in school. Um, so that's a new balance for me. I've never had to really do that before. We can get away with it when he's in like pre-K, but like now he's he's older and I don't want him to miss anything. I don't want him to be behind and I, I, I care about everything for him. So how are we gonna balance that? It's just, it's a matter of taking things one tour at a time, one year at a time, one day at a time and, and figuring, okay, what works for right now? When's your winter break? How can we schedule this to work? And that does give me a little bit of anxiety because I want it all. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, you know, you have to sleep too. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But you know, I'd, I'd, I'd rather have that struggle than not have that struggle. I'm excited, you know, to have it. And he brings so much love into my life. Terrific, you deserve it. Everyone deserves it. You know, we all need love, that's for sure. What would you yeah. say was the one thing, and we'll, we'll wrap it up soon because I would like you to go enjoy dinner with your family. Um, the one thing that you learned about yourself in 2020, I'm sure there was a lot of things, but. That's a hard question. Um, just because it's, it's really big. And um, it's, there's been so many times in my life when um, you have a moment and you go, mm, this is, this is important. This is a cornerstone kind of thing. Um, and this, this year really being, being a lot by myself and also uh, engaging so much with our music and our, our past and the idea of our future and um, just putting this to like, is this real? Are we doing this? This is happening. If it's gonna happen, that's a big commitment because I'm never, ever, ever gonna go in and say, let's make an album if I don't think it can be better than anyone we've ever done before. And I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to keep that up, <laughs> but that's the way it is for me. Because if I feel like we're gonna go in and do something that's it's good. You know, it sounds kind of like before, almost as good, you know, come on, let's have a good time. I, I can't do it. That's not good enough for me. It's got to feel like we're doing something we've never done. Um, and for me, part of that is um, finding the true core of myself every time. Like, what is it now? Who am I now? And I think um, something very beautiful that I'm so grateful for that I've been learning over the past few years, but again, like really reaffirmed in this moment, making this music is that I am who I've always been. That feels really good to know um, because when this whole thing started for me, I was, I mean, I was a teenager. Um, Fallen came out when I was, uh, it was my 21st birthday uh, when we were uh, taking that photo that's on the album cover. Um, and that's, I was so young in that time, I'd only, been making music for a few years I'd only known how to do anything for a second and you know you thought a certain way and dressed a certain way and did certain things when you were 21 that you maybe don't do anymore and uh, I've gone through plenty of phases where I was like I don't know I think maybe that was high school and I don't want to be labeled for that tiny one piece of myself um, but it's been really really cool letting the time go by a little bit in between playing concerts again and then taking a step back and going, are you sure? Because I'm never ever gonna fake it. Um, and seeing it and, and recognizing going, okay, I know what the core is, it's right here. It's still right here. And when I still put my hands on the keys, it still comes out sounding like something new, sounding like a fresh new thing that's inspired by all my new experiences. Um, but it's still there and it's still me and it was true from the beginning and that, makes me feel a, a, a weird kind of um, out of body like centeredness if those things can exist at the same time. Why not? <laughs> like you were, you, <laughs> you knew who you were, you are who you were. And I didn't know anything. I look, I, I've been going through all this 
<laughs> yeah, a new, a new skin sheds off every year that that makes you, you know, realize how much you're, you are adapting and changing because it's growing. And that's great. And I, I so would rather be me now than me then. You know, that's part of it too. The growing is good, but that root of things that I was trying to say and that was coming from my heart in that time is, is, is real. And that makes me feel okay about everything. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're that young and you're doing basically your, your adolescence in front of the world, you know, that's embarrassing. So embarrassing. I go back. I've <laughs> I've been going through all this. You, to you, but not to everyone else. <laughs> not to everyone else. It's embarrassing. Oh, it's pretty nice. <laughs> you, know. you know. I mean, just the same. I don't want my yearbook photos out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and mine are. Um, but I've been. This is my my uh, hobby project. You know, because we all have to have those uh, while we're sort of locked down still. Um, ha recently has been taking all these old, uh, I started with cassettes, putting those into digital and going through all my the cassettes I've held onto, which are awesome. That's, that's kind of how I like record my ideas or used to back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then went to CDs and now I've moved into like DVDs and videotapes from like when we had a camcorder and we were first on the road and oh my God, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. I... It's good, but I, I have to watch some of it with the sound down because I hear my own voice and I'm just like, no, no, you're not cool. You think you're cool. You're not cool. We all have that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sounds like a documentary to me. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to get some juices flowing out there. So. <sighs> Filmmaker's going to grab it up. Mm -mm. All right. Listen, you were terrific. And I'm very happy you. for you that you won this award. And I'm very happy for you that you're there with your family safe and sound. Thank you. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to have made it this far. And um, this time more than anything has uh, given us all a chance to look at what we have to be grateful for. And there's so much. So um, thank you. And I'm so grateful um, to um, stand among so many incredible, powerful women who have influenced our world in a positive way.